Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about vertical angular alignment. If we had two machines that had to be connected through a coupler, such as a pump and a motor, we would want to make sure that the center line of each was in alignment. If it's out angularly or offset, it's going to create excess vibration and wear and create problems. So we want these two shafts to be parallel and we want them to be on the same plane. When you're doing alignment, there's what's called vertical alignment and there's horizontal alignment. Vertical alignment is if we were to take a look at the side of these and we want them to be at the same height and we want them to be parallel. So in order to fix misalignment, we put shims under the feet of the machine to be shimmed. So in this case, we would be putting shims under the front or the back feet or all feet. If we were to do horizontal alignment, it would just be shifting the machine back and forth or shifting the back legs or the front legs, depending on the angle. All we're going to focus on here is vertical alignment. So I want that center line of that to be parallel and the same height as the center line of the other. When you're doing vertical alignment, there's two ways that your machine to be shimmed, which is the green one, can be off. The angle can be off and the offset can be off. So the angle means it's not parallel and offset it means it's not at the same height. So you need to correct both but the order in which you correct them is very important. If we had an angular and offset misalignment like this and if we were to correct the offset as soon as we corrected the angular our offset is wrong. So whenever you're doing alignment, you need to correct the angular misalignment first. So you need to make these two shafts parallel, then you deal with the offset. There are a few different approaches to doing vertical alignment. In this video, we're just going to correct the angular misalignment. Once the two shafts are parallel, it's very easy to correct the offset. So we correct the angular and then we measure to see what the offset misalignment is and then we correct that. In future videos, I'm going to be doing a technique called rim and face method or one step method of alignment where you're going to correct the angular and offset misalignment all at once. In addition, there's another method called cross dial, which is another one step method, which corrects angular and offset misalignment all at once as well. But in this video, we're only gonna focus on correcting the angular vertical alignment. So if this was my machine to be shimmed, this is the front legs, this is the back legs, I want to make sure that that's going to be parallel to the fixed shaft. So I could have an angular misalignment situation like that or like that. If my misalignment is like that, we need to put shims under the front legs to correct it. If my angular misalignment is like this, I need to put shims under the back legs to correct it. So I want to talk about a concept called slope and a concept called tolerance first, and then we'll actually calculate what shims are required to make this parallel to the fixed shaft. So this is my movable or machine to be shimmed shaft. This is my fixed shaft. This is the fixed. This is the movable or machine to be shimmed. In order to determine the angular misalignment, you will be either using a feeler gauge or a dial indicator to see if the gap is the same at the top as it is at the bottom. If it is, you know that those two couplings are parallel. If the gap at the top is wider than the gap at the bottom, then the angle is like this and we have to put shims under the back legs. If the gap is wider at the bottom than it is the top, then their angle of our shaft looks like this and we need to put shims under the front legs to make it parallel. Let's take a look at finding slope 
finding whether something's with intolerance, and then we'll take a look at how we calculate shim thickness to correct angular misalignment. First example says the amount of misalignment is six thousandths of an inch over a diameter of six inches. So you measure the gap at the top, gap at the bottom, and the gap at either the top or the bottom is six thousandths more than the other. Express this misalignment as slope. When you're asked to express misalignment as slope, what they mean is that they want you to express it as how much misalignment over one inch of length. We're going to set up a proportion. It's out six thousandths of an inch per six inches. So we want to know how much it's out per one inch. We cross multiply six times X will equal six thousandths times one. Divide by six. Therefore, our slope is one ten thousandths of an inch per inch. So slope is a ratio of two things. You can't just say this number, that doesn't represent slope, that just represents a number. Slope has to be at how much it's out per inch. Then you would look to see what's allowed, and that's called tolerance. That tolerance will be given and will change depending on what kind of equipment you're working with. Let's say that we're looking at a tolerance of 0 0.0005 of an inch per inch. So in other words, the tolerance is half a thousandths of an inch per inch. Our misalignment is one thousandths of an inch per inch. This number is greater than this. So if our actual misalignment is greater than the tolerance, it's not within tolerance. So this is not within tolerance. Therefore, we're going to have to calculate what shim thickness is required under either the front or the back legs to correct this misalignment. And we'll take a look at how we do that with the next example. So our next example says that the diameter of the coupling is 7 inches. The gap is 5 thousandths wider at the bottom. So we've either used a feeler gauge or a dial indicator to determine that. The machine length is 21 inches. So that's the length between the front feet and the back feet. Determine the amount of shims needed to bring the shafts into correct angular alignment. It's a direct proportion. If our angular misalignment is out five thousandths of an inch over seven inches, it's going to be out a greater amount over 21 inches. So it's a direct proportion and I will actually write the formula, but it's based on direct proportion. The ratio of the gap difference to the diameter. And remember that we actually use that ratio to determine slope. That will be equal to the shims required over the length of the base. So in our example, if it's the gap difference is five thousandths of an inch over seven inches, we can figure out what shims are required over a machine base length of 21 inches. We can leave out the units because that makes it look a little bit easier for you. And now we're going to cross multiply. So we multiply across the diagonals. Seven times x will equal 0 0.005 times 21. To solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 7. The 7 will cancel, and we'll have x equal to, if we take 5 thousandths, multiply by 21, divide by 7, we will get 15 thousandths. Not only will you need to know what shim thickness is required, but you'll need to determine where you would put those shims. So if the gap is wider at the bottom. Hopefully you can see that the angle of that shaft of the machine to be shimmed would look like this. The gap is wider at the bottom. So if this is the coupling of the fixed and this is the coupling of the movable, you can see that the angle of the shaft looks like this if the gap is wider at the bottom. 
So where are we going to need to put shims to correct that? Under the front feet. So we need 15 thousandths under the front feet. If we put those 15 thousandths shims under the front feet, now this shaft is parallel to the fixed shaft, and then all we have to do is measure what the offset is to determine how many more shims under all legs need to bring, up, bring it up to the same level. If the gap is wider at the top, then hopefully you can see that you need to put shims under the back legs to make it parallel. So that's all you need to do to correct vertical angular misalignment. You might need to find slope and determine whether it's intolerance. If it's not with intolerance, then you're going to actually have to calculate what shim thickness is required to correct that misalignment and where those shims should be placed. In the next videos, I am going to look at the two one-step methods for doing alignment, rim and face, and cross style.